Okay. So, first of all, uh, according to George Santayana, those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So, in general, the main reason why we are studying history is for us to learn from the mistakes na occurred in the past or yung mga mistakes na nangyari in the past and for us to avoid from repeating the same mistakes. But then, as for business history, one of the reasons why we are teaching or we need to learn business history is for us to uh, know kung paano nag-evolve yung practices and methods that they observed or practiced in the past. And sorry, uh, for us to know kung paano nag-evolve yung practices na nangyari in the past and kung paano siya um, napapractice up until in the modern times. So, when we say business history, business history is a historiographical field which examines the history of firms, business methods, government regulation, and the effects of business on society. So, when we say um, business history, ang focus natin is not only sa pag-alam ng history ng certain firms and certain businesses, as well as the regulations provided and observed or applied by the government and kung ano yung naging effect or kung paano naka-apekto yung regulations na yun sa mga existing businesses during those periods as well as in the modern times. So for today, we are going to tackle three eras. The first is Babylon and beyond. Second is medieval merchants. And the last is the era of ventures. So for the first era, Babylon and beyond took place in 4, 000, from 4000 BC or before Christ to 1000 AD, Anno Domini, which means in the year of the Lord. So during this period, uh, or during this era, dito unang na-introduce yung foundations of commercial law. So, when we say commercial law, the main focus of this law is to make sure na yung um, interests ng business and ng consumers is met or both of their um, interests are met at the same time uh, nag uh, because of commercial law, nag-regulate yung system ng trade para mag nagpa-promote siya ng fair trade between the merchants and the consumers para yung trade nila or yung um, transaction nila is reasonable in both parties. So, it was introduced or commercial law was first introduced during the Babylon era as well as the first efforts in accounting. So, yeah, the first efforts in accounting. Okay. So, it was also in Babylon era or Babylon period wherein the coined money was introduced. Uh, coined money or yung paggamit ng coined money was first introduced to the public in 600 BC. So, it was introduced by the Greeks. Pero, by, nung, um, by the time that it was introduced, hindi pa masyadong na-emphasize yung importance ng coined money. That's why um, the public or the Greeks nagsettle pa rin sila sa paggamit ng livelihood stocks such as sheep, cattle, uh, whenever they barter or let's say magbabayad sila, makikipag-trade sila, yun pa rin yung ginagamit nila na uh, means para ipambayad. So, coined money, hindi pa siya um, nabigyan ng importance until later, I mean, until in the later years. So, this is the, uh, yung one of the examples of their coins during that period. So, again, it was introduced in 600 BC by the Greeks. Now, during this um, during that time or during that period, ang pinaka-usage na lang is um, to keep account books. Ginagamit lang siya for change and to lend money 
And since hindi pa masyadong um, ginagamit yung transportation or transportation was not introduced um, during this period, ginagamit din siya for cash transfers from one city to another. So, yun lang yung pinahanaging usage ng coin no? when, it, when it was first introduced. Now, since um, the usage of coin or uh, the coin money system was already introduced, at the same time, nagkaroon ng Athen or nabuo yung Athens Popular Assembly. So, Athens Popular Assembly, ang pinaka-role nila sa public or sa society is uh, they are the ones who are responsible for controlling receipt and expenditure of public funds. So, sila rin yung nag-report sa public from time to time kung saan nagagastos yung taxes na ibinabaya nila sa government. So, that's the main role of Athens Popular Assembly. So, at the same time, uh, during this period, it was in 1080 AD when the first law school was introduced. So, first law school was first uh, introduced in Bologna, Italy. And isa sa mga unang na-introduce or unang, um, yeah, unang na-introduce sa law school na to or unang na-formulate sa law school na to is the contract law. Now, the main goal or the main purpose of contract law is to protect consumer rights and to ensure that there's a fair remedy just in case na magkaroon ng breach of contract between the two parties. So, yun ang uh, main goal or main purpose ng contract law during this period. Okay. So, the next one is accountancy or single entry bookkeeping. So, it was also during this period when the um, accountancy was first introduced to the public. So, it was sometime during this period, around 3000 BC, uh, where, sorry, uh, when they first introduced on how to bookkeep. So, people from Uruk, uh, Uruk is a city or a city-state in Baghdad, Iraq, and its neighboring cities sa Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, eh, the modern name for Mesopotamia, Sorry, ang kinakover na Mesopotamia are countries such as Iraq, Kuwait, Turkey, and Syria. So, yun ang cover na Mesopotamia. And people from Uruk, they are the first one to practice using pictographic clay tablets. Gaya po nun nakikita nyo. So, they use this to transact, to transact economically kapag uh, meron transaction, kapag meron um, pinapurchase yung bookkeepers which in the modern period are uh, sorry the modern the bookkeepers during this period are scribes and their main work is to uh, and their main task is to perform bookkeeping activities and record all financial transactions in a systematic manner so, sila yung nag -e encode ng mga data na pinaprovide ng tao. And once ma-encode nila yun, ang nag-check if it's accurate or the auditors. And then, just like in the modern era or in the modern days, ang nag-represent ng financial records are the accountants. So, yeah, they use this for economic transactions. And then, they would, uh, let's say, magkakaroon sila sa ng, tra ng transaction outside the gates, they would just look, or people would just look for the scribes para ma-inform nila yung scribe kung ano man yung transaction na nangyari during that day and mailagay siya sa pictographic clay tablet. Now, since this, uh, this form of bookkeeping became successful, ancient Egyptians did the same thing. Pero instead of pictographic clay tablets, since medyo naging advanced sila sa mga um, people from Uruk, since mas naging advanced sila, 
ang ginamit nilang form to write down the transactions is papyrus. So, it became more detailed since it's easier to write in papyrus than in pictographically tablets. It became more uh, detailed and it's more easier to write on papyrus. Now, uh, yeah. So now, since naging mas detailed siya, since mas naging detalyado, mas naging madali magsalat sa papyrus, there is also uh, no excuse for the scribes or for the bookkeepers para hindi maging accurate yung nilalagay nila sa papyrus. As well as, there's also no... Um, there's also no reason for accountants para hindi maging honest and maging accurate sa nilalagay nila kasi anything inaccurate or anything na um, dispute, dispute ng auditor sa ginawa ng accountant or sa ginawa ng bookkeepers are punishable by either fine, mutilation, or death. So, they really have all the reasons to be honest and to be accurate sa mga sinasabit nila sa government. Now, although this, uh, this form of writing down the transaction is also is only short-lived kasi as, um, after nila nagsulat sa papyrus, nag-advance ulit yung technology nila and all, pero this papyrus or this transactions can be found in different museums around the world. Now, the next, um, the next one is Chao Dynasty. So, Chao Dynasty uh, is in, uh, happened in China uh, from 122 BC to 256 BC. And unlike sa people from Uruk and unlike from the Egyptians, a naging main purpose ng bookkeeping sa Chao Dynasty is to make sure uh, or to make use of it to evaluate the government programs and the civil servants who administer them. So, hindi nila yun ginamit for financial records or for economic transactions but they used it for to evaluate the government programs. So, yun na naging gamit ng Chao Dynasty or ng Chinese and like in Egypt or just like in Egypt, it was only short-lived kasi in the next years or in the next uh, yeah, in the next years na introduce yung double uh, double entry bookkeeping sa China. So the next is ancient Rome. So as for ancient rooms or ancient Romans, ang ginagamit nila or ang ginamit nilang bookkeeping is only single entry. Pero they used two ledgers. The first is adversaria or day book. When we say adversaria or day book, lahat ng transactions na naka-indicate dito or lahat ng transactions na nakalagay sa ledger na to are transactions made within the day. And as for ancient Rome or ancient Romans, ang pwede lang humawak ng ledger sila is the head of the house or head of the family. So sila lang yung pwedeng mag-transact, sila lang yung pwedeng mag-list down ng transactions sa adversaria. Again, uh, transactions that can be found in adver uh, sorry in adversaria are transactions that were made within the day. Next is Codex Accepti et Expensi. Codex Accepti et Expensi uh, transactions na pwede ilagay dito or transactions na pwede ilist down are transactions that were made in the whole month. So yun lang yung pinakaiba niya sa adversaria. Now, as for the medieval times, uh, there are two ways kung paano sila nag-bookkeep. And the first is through income, income or profit, or means profit. And the next is outgo. So, outgo is expenses. So, the next topic is about uh, law or Hammurabi's Code. 
if you're familiar with this, in Tagalog, this is Kodigo ni Hammurabi. It was um, practiced or observed from 1795 to 17 BC. And just a little background about Hammurabi. Hammurabi or King Hammurabi was the king, sixth king of the first Babylonian dynasty of the Amorite tribe. So, simula na nag siya or simula nung umupo siya sa presto from 1795 to 1750 BC, ito na yung sila when it comes to trading or when it comes to transacting with other people. So, Hammurabi or Hammurabi's Code is known as the earliest example of an entire body of law. It is because although before pa, Nang Habura, or before Hammurabi's code, meron ng existing laws or meron ng existing um, rules. Uh, it was not acknowledged due to lack of documentation. So that's why Hammurabi's code is known as the earliest example of body of law. It is described as a blackstone monument eight feet high and clearly intended to be in public view. Now, it was not found until 1901, pero instead sa, or it was found not in Babylon, but in Persia. And some, there are some theories that most likely because may, dahil may mga conquerors na pumunta sa Babylon, they took Hammurabi's Code as a form of like a trophy or they carry it in, during their triumph. So currently, uh, Hammurabi's code can be found in Louvre Museum in Paris. And although buo pa rin siya because super tagal na simula nung nagawa to or simula nung nasula to, yung ibang uh, curves or ibang nakalagay sa stone is erased na. Now, one of the laws under Hammurabi's code states uh, under Hammurabi's code states that if a man builds a house badly and it falls and it kills the owner, the builder is to be slain. If the owner's son was killed, then the builder's son is slain. So, dito nag-start yung saying na an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So, if the owner of the house was killed, during yung pagtayo nila ng bahay, of course, the one that will be punished by death is yung gumawa ng bahay. But then, if yung anak nung gumawa ng, or if yung anak nung may-ari ng bahay yung namatay, during the building of the house, the uh, one that will be punished by death is yung anak nung gumawa. So, an eye for an eye, at least for a tooth. Okay. So, the, f uh, the following are laws um, that gave evidence of a fairly sophisticated business environment that was well established and prolific enough to require detailed regulation. So the first one is if a merchant entrusts money to an agent or to a broker for some investment and the broker suffer a loss in the place to which he goes, he shall make good capital to the merchant. So, during this period or during this time, also, uh, some merchants nagbibigay sila ng pera to brokers para yung broker yung makikipag-trade, makikipag-barter, makikipag-transact to other people. Now, if by any chance at natalo sa trade, natalo sa transaction or sa investment yung broker, hindi siya pwedeng bumalik sa merchant saying, na wala na yung pera or saying na uh, sorry, natalo yung investment natin. But then, under Hammurabi's code or what they practiced in the past, if by any chance at natalo ang broker sa investment or sa trade, kailangan niyang palitan yung capital na ibinigay ng merchant sa kanya. So, that's the first law in Hammurabi's code. The second is if while on a journey, an enemy take away from him anything that he had, the broker shall swear by God and by free of obligation. This is a forerun forerunner of the term force majeure, 
which under today's contract law free, frees both parties from liabilities and obligations when an extraordinary event be under control, like war, natural disaster, strike, etc. occurs. So, an example of force majeure is the pandemic. So, I think uh, you've saw this in the news na during the BLM movement, may mga nagloot sa New York City that during the strike, uh, some people loot in the stores and that falls under force majeure. Kasi um, the strike was beyond people's control and the people who took goods from the store or who took something from the store are free from obligations sa, I mean, sa batas. So that's under force measure. Now, yes. So, and any, uh, just by any chance, and uh, nangyari or nangyari yung force measure, people will not be liable for anything. So, yes. The next is, if a merchant gives an agent a corn, wool, oil, or any goods to transfer. Mamiya ulit, chika. <laughs> okay. So, let's proceed with the discussion. Okay. So, if a merchant give an agent a horn, wool, oil, or any other goods to transport, the agent shall give a receipt for the amount and compensate the merchant there therefore. Then, he shall obtain a receipt from the merchant for the money that he gives the merchant. So now, um, just like what I've said earlier, usually, ang nagpapatransport talaga ng um, nagpapatransport ng goods ay, wait lang. Yung nagpapatransport ng goods to a different state or to a different uh, market or to a different city is yung merchant. Now, kapag, um, sorry, the agent. Now, kapag naibigay na ng merchant yung itatransport sa agent, dun lang siya magbibigay ng resibo. Or let's say, na benta na ng merchant yung goods na ibinigay ng agent in return, or the moment na magbayad or ibigay ng merchant yung profit na nakuha from the goods that binenta niya sa market, ibibigyan niya ng resibo yung um, agent and then tsaka magbabayad yung merchant. But then, yeah. So, gano'n yung ginagawa nila in the ancient times. Pero, there is another law under Hammurabi's code that if an agent or if the agent is careless and did not take a receipt for the money which he gave the merchant, he cannot consider the unreceipted money as his own. Now, let's say, um, nakalimutan niya niya na bigyan ng or kunin yung resibo from the merchant kapag, let's say, na, nabenta na ng merchant yung goods, nabenta niya na yung, sir, uh, yung binigay ng merchant sa agent and then na kay agent na yung profit, binigay ng agent yung money sa merchant and hindi siya nagbigay ng resibo, hindi niya pwedeng kunin yung kinita from the trade. So, it will be the merchant to keep the money. Kasi, um, kumbaga, walang right yung agent sa pera na yun kasi hindi siya nagbigay ng resibo sa merchant. Now, if the agent accept money from the merchant but have a quarrel with the merchant or the merchant is denying na binigyan siya ng receipt ng agent, then the merchant shall swear before God and witnesses that he has given the money to the agent and the agent shall pay three times, three times the sum. Now, if by any chance and nag-deny yung agent na binigyan siya ng pera ng merchant because of some misunderstandings or some issues between the two of them, 
the merchant kailangan siyang um, kailangan siyang magtestigo or kailangan niyang patunayan na nagbigay talaga siya ng pera sa agent and if it was proven by the law governing people na nagbigay talaga ng pera yung merchant sa agent the agent will have to give or kailangan niya ibalik yung pera three times the sum so dine di ata nag exist yan ngayon <laughs> tatlong bet <best>. three times <laughs> <laughs> Swerte ka lang, masingil mo pa eh. <laughs> Kaya, yung iba kasi talaga, lalo na kapag ano, tatakbuhan ka na lang. Tatakbuhan ka kasi mm-hmm. mag- mas- masingil pa na nga kahit 50% lang to dati, mm-hmm. three times, three folds. Mm-hmm. Yes, mas mahigpit talaga sila during this period kasi, yun nga, yung, um, vi- yung kapalit ng pagsuway nila sa law is not just simply jail time. But fine, oh, mutilation or and ev- anything or any na mabibigat na kasalanan or anything na mabibigat na violation is punishable by this. So that's why they have to um they have to follow the law na ini implement during those period during that time. So the next one is. Family business or Kongogumi, which took place or which happened from 578 BC to up to date, up until the present. So, uh, Kongogumi is a family based in Japan, and they start yung business nila, nila because of this emperor, na who happened to travel from. South Korea to Japan. So during this period, um, nag start pa lang silang mag-introduce ng Buddhism sa Japan. That's why this emperor or this um, yeah, emperor Yome tinig advantage nila yung budding rice ng Buddhism sa Japan para mag-branch out sila sa Japan. So, from Korea, magbabranch out sila sa Japan ng pagtatayo ng mga temples. So, the first temple na naitayo nila sa Japan is located in Shitoneji. So, these are called Buddhist temples and Shinto shrines. And the first temple was built in Shitoneji in Japan. Now, at some point, or because uh, may mga tao pa rin, or there are some individuals that were against Buddhism, at some point, uh, because of this anti-Buddhist movements, they decided to destroy some of these temples. Now, nagsabay yung anti-Buddhist movement at the same time, yung World War II, were in walang may gusto magpatayo ng temples, walang may gusto magpatayo ng shrines. But then, mas naging focus ng mga tao nun, unfortunately, sadly, because it's World War II, right? Ang naging focus sila is maggawa ng coffins for the people who will, who will die or who died during the war. So, from shrines or from building shrines, from building temples, na medyo nag-branch out sila or medyo nalihis yung business nila and they branched out to general contracting which involves, yun nga, um, making coffins for the people or the soldiers who died during World War II. Now, uh, this branching out or Although, hindi naman yun talaga ang purpose ng Congo Gumi or hindi naman talaga yun ang uh, original na business nila, naging patok yung business nila, I mean, yung paggagawa nila ng coffins because yun yung pinaka-in-demand during that time. Now, after World War II, maraming na-destroy na, tra- na shrines, maraming na-destroy na temples. Kongo Gumi also took that advantage para mas lalo lumago yung business nila and that is by rebuilding these temples, rebuilding the shrines, and of course, lumago yung business nila. 
Now, it was in the year 1896, sorry, 1986 to 1991. Uh, there's this thing called bubble economy na nangyari sa Japan. So, when we say bubble economy, tumaas yung value ng real estate, tumaas yung value ng stock market to the point na these banks, kusa silang namalapit sa individuals, parang individuals is mag-loan, mag-loan sa banko, mag-invest. Uh, sila yung kusa nagbibigay ng pera sa mga tao kasi sobrang um, tumaas yung economy ng Japan during the bubble economy or during those years. But then, uh, yeah, so, Kongo Gumi or the family of Kongo Gumi or one of their relatives, nag-loan sila from the bank. They heavily loaned from the bank and then nag-invest sila sa real estate. Now, again, this happened from 1986 to 1991. But then, come 1992, na, na naka-experience ng recession ang Japan, lahat ng real estate stocks, lahat ng stock market, all of the assets ng Kongugumi, bumagsak ang value. That's uh, to the point na walang natira sa family nila but debts or yung loans na meron sila. So, all of their assets lost lost its value and Japan's economy stagnated. So, kumbaga, because uh, naging sudden lahat, naging sudden yung recession, sudden yung pagbagsak ng economy, there's no way for them na mabawi or mabayaran agad yung loans kasi mababa yung value ng um, ng assets nila because as well of the recession. So, because of that, uh, Congo Gumi, muntik na sila mag-close during that period. But then, they, somehow, they managed to survive until 2006. <clears throat> Sorry. So, in 2006, tuluyan na sila na-declare ng bankruptcy. But then, if you can see, it says that Congo Gumi is still... Uh, operational up until this day because there is when this com uh, there's this one company in Japan na nag-purchase ng company binili na y- binili nila yung Kongo Gumi and because maganda yung pangalan or mataas yung value nung pangalan nung company they chose to keep the name that's why it's still considered as operational up until this day now according to the last CEO of Kongo Gumi before yung turnover dun sa bago may ari, it is said the, or according to Mas- Masazako Kongo, everybody may be fretting about the recession how tough these times are. But we shouldn't be overwhelmed by all the gloom. Believe in your business and stick to it. So, actually <clears throat> here in Qatar, uh, prior to the pandemic, hindi na rin masyadong um, stable yung economy. Now, ang usual, ang usually, most especially in recessions like this or sa mawawabang economy or sa unstable economy, katulad neto, ang isa sa mga naapektuhan is the hospitality. So, majority of the hotels here in Qatar, instead na i-close down nila, yung hotels, ang ginagawa nila, pinaparent nila yung mga units para somehow meron pa rin profit na pumapasok sa hotel. So, ito rin yung isa sa mga tinuturo ko sa students ko sa business management na if mag uh, create, mag-establish, mag-open tayo ng business, it is important na hindi tayo mag bubukas, mag-start ng business Dahil yun yung nasa trend, yun yung uso. Kasi trends come and go. Paano ho yung, tre- yung business na gusto natin i- i-operate or yung gusto natin buksan is in trend, pero nawala yung trend bigla. So, paano na yung business natin? So, it is important if may plan man tayo mag-open ng business, na yung business na i-operate natin or i-open natin is ko ano talaga yung gusto natin. Kasi, like what Congo said, it is hard 
to let go of a business. Lalo pa yung business nila kasi, it lasts for 14 generations. So, it was hard for them to let go of the business. Now, it was considered, or before the fall of their business in 2006, it was considered the oldest, uh, world's oldest continuously operating business, surviving 14 centuries of political upheavals, economic crisis, and world wars. So, ganun katagal na last yung Congo Gumi. So, before we proceed sa next era, any questions po about Babylon and beyond? Wala naman po. Pero yun lang, um, say example, if you have business uh, which is actually within the trend, so you mm -hmm. must just have a second thought that uh, yun, you are you should be open for the diversified business para at least alam mo na may fullback ka in case kung wala na tong trend na to. Mm -hmm. So, bigla, pwede kang mag-switch to another kind of business. Yes, exactly. But during this pandemic, ayun, yung mga hotels mm -hmm. yung from different countries is naging quarantine na siya kahit mm -hmm. dito <laughs> sa Dubai. Kasi nga, dapat kasi yung parang kailangan talagang kumita yung ano, mm -mm. kahit in any way. Mm -mm. And they diversified themselves. Yes. Tsaka, yun nga. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Sige po. Miss Angeline, I have, I have a question regarding the force majeure that you mentioned earlier. Yes po. It, uh, is, is this something that it should be or it should be up, uh, included in the contract or there sh or, or it, it, it sometimes happens na uh, we can remove the force majeure because I believe, as you said, force majeure is uh, uh, it will it uh, pag uh, I mean the the obligation will be something like parang mawawala siya because mm -hmm. there's a God act or something. Mm -hmm. uh, possible, but for example, there will be a contract, for example, between you and me, and then we were not gonna include this this uh, disclaimer or this type of uh, wording. Or no, should, it should always... Actually, force majeure from what I know is not included in contracts. Kasi, uh, let's say, there is an existing contract, pero because force majeure nga po is something beyond our control, bigla, uh, nawawala yung agreement. So, just like what the example that I gave earlier, looting is an example. So, let's say... Um, Let's say, uh, sarada lahat ng stores because of uh, let's mm, say, a typhoon okay. and all it. that. So there will so be no obligation. Okay. So you mean by the de by default, dapat ba lagi lagi yun na So both parties are aware na in case of unforeseen situation, uh, talang you're now you're no longer you have no obligation in case na yeah, kagaya ng pandemic or something. Kasi parang minsan nangyayari, uh, nagiging, uh, I'll give an example, uh, for example, yung insurance. Mm -hmm. Alam ko, meron ako, may meron akong medical insurance. And then nobody have seen this type, this uh, uh, unprecedented pandemic na we're encountering right now. So bigla, suddenly, nagkaroon sila mga insurance company na pag nag-positive ka ng COVID, is, they, they need to study if they will cover it first. Although, mm -hmm. yung parang mga ganong situation. So the question is uh, possible ba na itong type of uh, ano, I mean, it's a contract lang but, I mean, mm -hmm. you mentioned hindi yun din mentioned sa contract. Mm -hmm. So, kasi whenever I see contract, I always see, uh, na lagi kong napapansin yung word na for Yeah, contract. yeah, yeah. There's always the, the mm -hmm. first meeting. Yes. So, there. my question is possible ba na we can exclude this it between a mutual understanding of both parties or by default, it should always be there. Well, if it's a contract and it is, it of course, written, yeah, it should be there. Mm. Pero, just yeah. like putin sa example yun na insurance, there are really company, insurance companies or medical insurance companies na, aside from COVID, there are certain mm. diseases na hindi nila kinakover. Patients. Mm. But normally, okay. if uh, if you can say force injury, so 
sino who will bear the loss? Sorry? Oh, because it is always oh. like, both uh, whoever, I think, whoever is affected will just Mm-mm. bear the loss because uh, this is always like exception for the liabilities of any other parties. Mm-mm. So who got the loss, then it's your loss. Yes, because no one will be obligated. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. No one is responsible to reimburse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yung, yung parang nangyari dun sa BLM movement, hindi sila, um, by law, hindi sila pwedeng manghuli kasi it's force majeure. So, unless otherwise, mag-file ng formal complaint yung company, that's the only time na, you know, parang yung ginagawa ng Apple, they were tracking everyone who took goods from their store. So, that's the only time that they can make someone responsible for their actions. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Um, can I just add something? Go. Um, regarding this loss of the items in the BLM movement, I think for those items, because mm-hmm. I think ransak din na yung mga Louis Vuitton. Mga yes. <laughs> I think that is covered. Naman usually, usually may mga insurance. Insurance. Mm-hmm. Yes. Kahit at kahit pa force major siya. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think Louis Vuitton had already learned kasi parang in any country na mayroong mga strikes, ganyan, laging Louis Vuitton yung rinatak. <laughs> Kahit yung sa papas sa atin. <laughs> yun ang inuuna talaga. Yung mm-hmm. ano, Hermes, tapos Louis Vuitton, ganun. Sila yung inuuna. Eh. Yes, I think they learned it already. So, sabi ni siguro na, sige, ransakin niyo na lahat. <laughs> so, yeah. Tapos ang i- i-declare nila mas mas ano pa sino na, sino namang nagsasabi nila oh inventory nila is like only worth 2 million dollars pwede nang sabihin 3 million di ba? Mm-hmm. Kasi wala namang alam hindi mo naman ma-inventory yes. kung ano magkano talaga yung nando di ba? Mm-hmm. So, business pa rin yun. Yeah. Tsaka yun nga uh, may mga businesses din na nagtitake advantage ng insurance. Correct. Oo. Kasi malaki rin makakuha nila doon. <laughs> Tapos yung insurance naman din naman, re-insured din yan sa ibang mm-hmm. kumpas. Third party. Oo. So, mm-hmm. Meron yung re-insurance. Pasa-pasa lang. Yes. Mm-hmm. Meaning, hati-hati sila. <laughs> so, magbabayad. It's okay. Uh, any questions about Babylon? Or any, yeah, any questions about Babylon? Wala naman na po. <clears throat> okay. So, let's proceed to the next era. Medieval merchants. So, medieval, medieval merchants started uh, 1000th, 10th century to the 17th century. So, the, the following tips were from this book by a Norwegian author. Ang title ng book niya is The King's Mirror. And the following were foreign business trips on how you will deal with foreign partnerships or forging partnerships. So, the first tip is he should be polite and agreeable or yung person na makikipagpapasok uh, sa partnership. He should be polite and agreeable but should examine goods before he buys them and in the presence of witnesses. If by chance he has purchased inferior goods, let him resell them for what they are and taking his losses, sorry, deceive no one as he has been, as he has been deceived. Now, usong-uso to yung, uh, let's say, bibili tayo ng uh, good, let's say, from Amazon, eBay, or even sa malls, ganyan. Pero hindi natin alam na defective yun na bibili natin. Now, there are some or there are some individuals na kahit alam nila or aware sila na defect- defective yung goods or service na nabili nila, ibebenta pa rin nila sa market at a higher price or a higher amount ng nabili nila. Pero according to this tip or according to this law, it is not allowed. So, let's say, kung nabili natin yung isang good or yung isang item for $100, pero yung market value lang talaga niya is $20, dapat sa $20 natin siya ibenta, 
kasi we should not yes we did lose some money pero we are not allowed to deceive other people so usually na gumagawa rin nito is Amazon there are returns let's say a customer or a consumer received a defective product or ayaw na nila dun sa product na yun. Pero, at some point, the product was already used by the previous consumer. Tapos, binalik siya sa Amazon. Ang ginagawa ng Amazon, sin- um, nag-iipon sila ng returns from consumers and then, ilalagay nila yun sa isang box. And then, they will sell the box. Yung parang sa Lazada and sa Shopee. Uh, mystery box. So, ginagawa nila yun na yung total amount ng box is, let's say, uh, uh, ibebenta nila sa market ng 1,000 pesos, pero yung amount niya is more than that. Pero the reason why the amount is 1,000 pesos, because majority of those products, hindi na siya pwedeng gamitin, or majority of those products are defective na. So, there are companies who does that. So, an example also is flea market. Pero as for flea market, yun talaga bagsak presyo kasi uh, majority of the products as well are defective okay. products or products na kailangan i-restore. So, the next tip is when abroad or when we are abroad, the merchant should live well but carefully and with restraint of speech and passion. So, kagaya lang ng normal na, I mean, let's say, kapag pumupunta, pumupunta tayo sa ibang bansa, before tayo pumunta sa ibang bansa, we should be accustomed ko ano man yung customs nila, traditions nila, ibang bansa. Kasi, of course, ko ano yung tradition natin or customs natin sa Pilipinas, hindi naman yun yung same na custom ng pupuntahan natin. So, we should still be careful with restraint of speech and passion, most especially if papasok tayo sa partnerships. Next is, he should study, especially the local law books, when he has time. He should master the customs of the place he is trading in. So, like what I've said, uh, not only in trading or in entering partnerships with uh, foreigners or people from abroad, uh, kahit pag simpleng travel lang, simpleng nagka-travel lang tayo overseas, it is uh, it is important. The, one of the most important things is to educate ourselves ko ano yung customs ng, or customs, practices, and the traditions ng bansa na pupuntahan natin. So, it is one of the most important things. Next is, he should shun drinking, chess, harlots, quarreling, and gambling. So, overseas, or according to this book, we should, uh, whenever we're abroad, or if our main goal is to trade or enter a partnership overseas, dapat daw nating iwasan yung drinking, playing games, uh, hiring some prostitutes, quarreling, and gambling. Next is, he should study the sky, directions, and the sea so as to be able to navigate. All merchants have great need of arithmetic. So, medieval merchant started 10th century to 17th century. During this period, hindi pa na-introduce ang trains, cars, sa public. So, the only way to travel is either by foot probably by bicycle or uh, plane or by sea. Yeah, because during a uh, train was not introduced until 18th century. Same with car. Car was only introduced in 1885. So, it is important that uh, these people na enter ng partnership or yung travel it is important that they know how to navigate. Kasi there is a possibility or bigger possibility that they will travel by sea. Next is, let him cultivate the friendship 
of the officials of the country in which he trades and pay the dues that are required. Let him see to it that none of the government's property gets into his cargo. So, <clears throat> it is okay or it is um, normal or okay lang na makipagkaibigan to anyone overseas as long as you have to make sure that you pay the dues and the taxes that required by the government. Now, the reason why you should not or let uh, you should not take any of the government's property into your cargo is because there is an implication na the uh, this is a pra illegal practice because some of these properties hindi na nila kailangan dumaan sa customs or hindi na kailangan magpay ng due for the goods na ilalagay sa cargo. So, make sure that none of the government's properties gets into the cargo. Okay, so the next is he should sell quickly if he gets suitable prices and then be off. For a quick turnover is the life of the trade. So most especially in auctions or kapag uh, nag-auction tayo, mabilis yung turnover or mabilis yung um, pagpaparid ang presyo, ganyan. So if we were able to get or if someone offered us a better amount for the item that we have, it is better, according to this author, it is better na i-grab na yung amount na yun and then just leave because the turnover is fast. Or in most especially in trading, mabilis talaga yung turnover. Next is, he should always buy shares in a good ship or in none at all. So, it's either you go uh, you go big in trading or in um, in this partnership or you go home. So, go big or go home. Next is, if he acquires wealth rapidly, then he should invest part of his wealth in a partnership trade with others doing the traveling. But he should also be cautious in selecting the partners. Now, kapag nakapag-trade tayo or kapag pumasok tayo sa partnership or let's say we were able to um, kumita tayo na malaki from a certain trade or for a certain partnership, it is advisable na a part of that money na nakuha natin should be uh, put or i-invest siya sa isang partnership or invest siya sa some project kanyan. Because since we were able to get um, a big money or we were able to get um, profit or a high profit from a certain amount or a certain trade, there is also a possibility na mabilis lang mawala yung pera sa atin. So while we still have the profit or while we still have the money, it is better to invest it para at the same time lumalago yung pera. Pero in uh, getting engaged or in partnering or in entering a partnership, we should still be careful kung sino yung magiging partners natin. Lalo pat na, nasa foreign land tayo. Next is, if he acquires a great deal of wealth in trade, let him divide it into three parts. Let him invest one-third in partnership with experienced and reliable men who are, per who are permanently located in towns. The other two-thirds may then be invested in various business ventures for the sake of the, li uh, 
uh, for the sake of the safety that lies in diversity. So, again, um, kapag pumapasok tayo sa trading or kapag nakakuha tayo ng let's say, ng capital na pwede natin ipasok for partnership, hindi necessary na um, hindi necessary na isang partnership lang yung invest na natin or isang partnership lang yung papasukin natin or isang isang partnership lang yung pag uh, bibigyan natin ng um, percentage ng wealth na nakuha natin from the trade. So, one, maybe one-third from those who are experienced or yung mga um, agents or brokers na permanently naka-stable or may permanent na address sa isang lugar. And the other one or the two-thirds can be invest to different business kasi like I said, the turnover is fast and yeah, anything will happen. Anything can happen. So, it's better to invest in different businesses or in different ventures than speaking to one business or to only one partnership. Okay. So, the next one, the next topic is the banking and the Knights Templar. So, incidentally, uh, the Knights Templar, incidentally, it became one of the most largest institution, banking institution, during this period. Now, the Knights Templar, meron silang uh, reputation as fighting men. They have this reputation as fighting men. So, lahat ng papasok, lahat ng dadaan sa Knights Templar, they have to leave um, a valuable uh, valuable belonging sa castle sa Knights Templar. Now, one of their goals or one of their main goal is to make sure na yung pilgrims makakarating sila sa Holy Land nang hindi sila na ina-attack or hindi sila um, nananahawan from uh, ng ibang tao. Now, when we say pilgrims, these are travelers who are on their way to the Holy Land or to Jerusalem. So, before maka-travel or before makapasok sa castle, uh, ito mga travelers na to or these pilgrims, they have to leave one of their valuable belongings in exchange of money or exchange of in exchange of coins and at the same time let's say naharating na sila in Jerusalem and makabalik sila maka survive sila from Jerusalem back to the Knights Templar or back to the castle ng Knights Templar pwede nilang makuha ulit yung valuable belonging na yun so, ang concept nito is quite the same sa pawn shops wherein pwede tayong magsanla and when the time comes, pwede na rin tayong, pwede natin siyang tubusin. And, what? yeah, just like uh, sa pawn shops, Knights Templar, nag-charge din sila ng interest. Now, by the time na, mat, um, yeah, by the time or before ma-dissolve, Unite Templar, <clears throat> sorry, they have employed 7,000 employees and yung principal banker nila are popes and kings. So, the next is Free Trade and the Hanseatic League. So, Free Trade took place after the Black Death. So, when we say Black Death, ito yung great, yeah, the Great League in Europe, Bibonic Plague in Europe, mm-hmm which happened to kill 70 million, 75 million to 200 million people. So, after after ng Black Death, down ng economy ng Europe, uh, there's no way, par, uh, there's no other way for them to trade. Wala silang other means to trade. So, since wala rin namang parang main state or wala rin namang uh, strong state 
or yung pinaka-head state sa Europe by that time, it gave way or it paved way para mabuo yung Hanseatic League. Now, ang main goal ng Hanseatic League is to promote free trade among the people. So, ang naging involved dito are people from Germany, Russia, and London. But then, by the, before it dissolved or before may dissolve yung Hanseatic League, the total league cities or the total cities na nag-join ng league are 85 cities. So, 85 cities joined the Hanseatic League. Now, as a part of free trade, so when we say free trade, uh, it is a trade policy na hindi kailangan mag, uh, walang restrictions sa import-export, walang restrictions sa tariff or sa taxes, sa dues or any restriction. So, their one of their goals is to promote free trade, pero most of this Hansa businessmen or most of these people na nang involved sa Hanseatic League, ang uh, venture na ginagrasp lang nila or ginagrab lang nila is single venture. So let's say Hansa businessmen manggagani siya ng friends pagdating niya ng Germany and hapag bayad, nagbayad na sila, nagpapagitan na sila ng trade, nagbayad na yung other party, madi-dissolve yung partnership na yun because it's just a single venture. Now, at the same time, uh, during this period or during this era, since there's no, uh, there is an absence of a strong central government in Germany, tumaas yung risk na mag-wage ng war yung isang city to another city. That's why every roads are guarded Lahat ng um, cities, meron silang fortress or fortress. Uh, these are buildings or these are construction na uh, designed for the defense just in case someone wages war. So, uh, that's one of the risks that took place or na nangyari during the Hanseatic League or after the Black Death. At the same time, um, because wala na govern sa Hanseatic League, hindi polished yung bookkeeping nila. They are very unorganized. And madalas sila nagtatalo sa kung ano man yung paghihatian ng profit nila. So, because of that or because of those, and since may mga emerging states na, just like uh, England, France, Russia, and Sweden, since may mga emerging states na, uh, yun yung isa sa mga naging cause kung bakit na-dissolve yung Hanseatic League. It is said that the last assembly or the, the last general assembly was held in 16, uh, 1669 pero before pa sila mag-last general assembly or way before that na-dissolve na yung Hanseatic League. So, the next is the House mm -hmm. of Figure. Pandemic din yung Black Death of Europe. Yes po. Pandemic din siya. Pandemic. Mm -hmm. Dami na matay. Dami. 200 million. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes. I think dun nga nila ano, compare ngayon tong COVID-19. Kasi aside from uh, Ebola and aside from Great Plague, ito yung one of the biggest talaga na o may uh, nag-impact sa world economy. And, mm. yeah, they're fearing na after 2004 at 2006, yung recession, after that, ngayon na lang ulit mag-world recession because of the pandemic. So, 2009. Yes. Mm -hmm. In Asia pa rin ang biniblame nila. <laughs> Carrier <laughs> ng virus. <laughs> China. China virus. So, yeah. <laughs> well, and it's ano kasi after di ba may COVID tapos may bagong strain na naman ng swine flu so <laughs> well so okay. okay so next is the house of fever 
So, House of Figure is said to be the bridge between the medieval and the modern era. So, <clears throat> sorry. So, nag-start yung dynasty nila in the thir 13th century and it started in Bavaria. So, it started when Hans Figur moved to Bavaria and nag-start sila, yung, yung first business nila is Fustian weaving. So, yeah. So, uh, strong cut, uh, Fustian is a strong cotton and linen fabric. Now, mm -hmm. since the reason why lumawak yung network nila is because from fabric, nag-invest sila sa textile trade, lumipat sila sa cotton and spice, and eventually, naging mining and copper yung business nila. So, during, it was also during this era, or it was also during this period, wherein una nilang ginamit yung newsletters para makapag-circulate ng, sorry, para makapag-circulate sila to their associates. Now, before the death, of Jacob Figure, you anak ni Hans Figure, which is the founder of the House of Figure. Um, he was known to be one of the richest or the biggest uh, richest business person by the time of his death in 1525. His net worth is around $400 billion. And shortly after his death, they reopened the Figure Bank in 1954, which is still operating up until this day. So, before we proceed to the last era, any questions or clarifications about medieval merchants? Wala naman po. Knights Templar. Pa? Yung, yung sa Knights Templar, kung pupunta sila ng Jerusalem, they're going to deposit the money? Yes. Um, yeah. Kung maga para magkaroon sila oh, yes, ng money. Coins. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In exchange of coins or in exchange of money, uh, mag-iiwan sila ng valuable belonging sa castle. Oh, like, Mortgage sila yung mga shato nila. But what if kung if they will not survive? So then they can enter. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot enter. Go back. <laughs> in the event, yes, in the event that the pilgrim did not survive, you know, let's say, pabalik na siya ng, from Jerusalem, the belonging, makukuha siya ng Knights Templar. Or siya yung, parang marira mata ba? Oh. Hmm. So, mm. gano'y yung mangyayari. Kaya pala sila yung mayaman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi hindi rin sure na makakasurvive. Oo. Oh, Nakakabalik. Oh. Oh, Kasi walang, walang proper na form of transportation. Hindi kaya ngayon. So, walang talaga na. Yes. Pero mga percent lang yung magsasurvive. <laughs> Maliit lang yung chance. Mm. Okay, so if there's no questions about medieval merchants, we'll proceed to the last era, which is the era of ventures. Ventures. Yes. So, era of ventures started 17th century to the 19th century. And dito na introduce yung double entry booking system by Pasholi. So, when we say double entry, debit credit, uh, yeah, hindi pwede na debit lang or hindi pwede credit lang, it should be balanced always. So, it was also during this era or during this period wherein uh, na introduce ang intellectual property rights. So, under intellectual property rights, there are subcategories such as copyright, trademark, and patent. Now, ang pinagkaiba ng copyright at ng patent 
is copyright it, uh ang kin ang pinoprotect nila or ang kina copyright nila are only ideas or expression of an and sorry expression of an idea whereas for patent yung invention mismo products. or yung ba yeah, yung products mismo so under intellectual property right is the patent so before inventor bylaws or before mahapag provide ng um, law protecting intellectual property rights or patent, ang usual na binibigay nilang monopoly for um, the inventors is 10 years lamang. 10 years only. So, in that period or in that uh, in 10 years, dapat makapagbigay sila ng specification. Mabigay nila yung invention nila or magawa nila yung invention nila. And ma-patent nila yung invention na yun. Otherwise, hindi sila pwedeng maka, hindi nila pwedeng ma-patent yung invention na yun under their name. So, it all changed when Inventor Bylaws was introduced. Inventor Bylaw, because of Inventor Bylaw, from 10 years, nagkaroon sila ng window period na 20 years, and still, in the 20 years, dapat nakapag-invent, nabigay yung specification. At the same time, um, na-register siya sa patent office. But then, there are still inventors who were not able to um, patent their inventions despite the fact na humaba yung period na allotted for them. So, the following are legal conditions or legal conditions na nag apply only for patent. The first is the famous patent of Arkwright for spinning machines was not allowed for the lack of inadequate or for the lack of an adequate specification after it had been in existence for 10 years. So even um, regardless the fact na may spinning wheels na for 10 years, Pero Arkwright he was not able to register spinning wheels under his name sa patent office because hindi, yeah, hindi sapat yung specification kung paano gamitin yung spinning machines, kung paano, um, kung paano siya nagawa. The blueprint was not complete, it was not submitted. So, hindi siya na patent under his name. <clears throat> uh... As for what, what's uh, 1796 patent for steam engines established the important principles that valid patents could be granted for improvements to an existing patented device. So let's say uh, use spinning machines the arc right, or let's say use steam engines. Steam engines are existing now way before 1796. But then, although it has been patented na a couple of times, since inventor bylaws allowed inventors to patent certain inventions under their name, in the condition na yung blueprint nila or yung specification nila or yung ipapatent nila is an upgraded version ng previous patented invention. Now, if hindi siya developed or hindi siya improved invention, hindi siya pwedeng mapatent ulit kasi nakapatent na siya sa previous inventor. Pero as long as uh, upgraded, as long as improved version siya, regardless if there's an existing patent, pwede pa rin siyang ipatent sa, nag, sa bagong inventor. So, oh, yung ano ba, uh, yung sa patent, example, if uh, patented siya in Japan, example, only in Japan patent office, and someone will register in in Germany, the same thing. So, paano yan siya mag, ano? Hindi pa rin yung, po siya pwede kasi uh, nakapatent po siya. And so, automatic siya worldwide if, mm -mm. if you are going to uh, pat, uh, patent, uh, registered it in certain patent office in certain country, automatic na worldwide siya. Yes, kasi just like in trademark po, di ba? Kasi same lang naman sila. 
uh, kapag trade, mm-hmm. kailangan mo siyang i-register each country. Mm-hmm. Well, if you have to find the... Madi-differentiate mo siguro sila by model. Model or yung, uh, yung region. Region, origin. Mm-hmm. Same patent but the origin. Parang ganun Kasi, na tayo. Kasi product. Uh, patent is product. Say, example, like, um, di naman natin alam, like, uh, they can a certain example, sabihin na natin, Japan, USA, Germany, may gumagawa na isang product. Sabihin na natin, mm-hmm. kung, ay, sige na, simple, um, ganitong model na um, cellphone or say camera, tapos yeah. parang para same idea and they will gonna register it mostly, almost at the same time. So parang, ano, kapag kasi, siguro, sa ngayon, automatic na worldwide na siguro yung each patent office na parang, um, Kung yung makikita na nila agad kung, oy meron akong nakapag-register nito sa Japan. So, siya na yun. Mm-mm. Siguro, I don't know, by that time, siguro, before, hindi pa siya worldwide. Siguro yeah. yun, pwede matik na worldwide. Opo, kasi uh, mm-hmm. during that time, hindi talaga siya, kailangan siyang, like what you said po, kailangan siyang uh, i-register country per country. Pero, per country. yun kasi, medyo... Siyempre, um, advance in technology and mm-hmm. um, business uh, business companies or these companies uh, would register patents not only to a certain country, but let's say region by region or mm-hmm. a certain continent. So, yeah. Ganun yung patent. Yung lumawak na. Uh, lumawak mm-hmm. yung scope ng patent nila. So, siyempre, instead of since gagastos ka rin naman na to patent your product sa isang country, might as well magpatent ka na for the entire region. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but as for trademark, um, we have to register it each country. We have to search for uh, first is um, um, trademark search, mm-hmm. then trademark application para ma- kung mag- Mm-hmm. wala talagang kapareha ng pangalan mo, then you can proceed with it. Yes. Okay. So, okay. So, um, as for patent, or as for intellectual property rights, it is also said na hin- uh, hindi ma-specify kung ano yung earliest um earliest patent to ever exist pero before inventor bylaws there are certain uh patent laws na just like uh in london sorry in britain where in para mapatent yung invention nila or para mapatent yung specification nila sa isang invention dapat meron dry seal ni King Henry the Sixth. So, that is the only time na makakonsider na patented yung invention nila or yung specification nila. So, yeah. Okay. So, the next one is stock markets. So, there are several uh, regions of stock markets in different countries. And the first is France. Mm-hmm. So, as for the stock exchange or as for the stock uh, market sa France, it was um, King Henry, uh, sorry, King Philip IV or the king that they call uh, Philip the Fair of France siya yung nag-establish uh, ng Courtier de Exchange or Courtier de Change which in English is Currency Exchange Service. So, just a little background po about King Philip IV. Uh, King Philip IV is the reason why na-dissolve yung Knights Templar. Because during this time or during this period, um, nabaon siya sa utang sa Knights Templar. So, what he did, ginawa niya ng butas or hinanapan niya ng paraan para mapunish yung Knights Templar. And he used his connections with a certain pope 
So, the um, Knights Templar kasi, hindi sila governed by the king. Governed sila by the Pope. So, um, the Pope dissolved or demolished the Knights Templar and King Philip IV was the one who was behind it or siya yung nagpa-dissolve no Knights Templar. So, yeah. So, dito nag-start sa so, uh, currency exchange service yung stock exchange sa France and at the same time, uh, aside from the currency exchange service, there are also stock exchange na nag-start in Netherlands and Frankfurt. So, it was later after ma mabuksan or it was later after maging operational yung currency exchange service. So, as for London, uh, the stock exchange or stock market in London started in 1698. So, it started sa isang coffee shop wherein they just simply trade uh, over some regular things, like barter sila over regular things, and they call it the course of exchange and other things. So the course of exchange and other things, nakalista dun lahat na items that uh, uh, in offer nila for trade, and nakalista dun lahat ng Nakalista doon lahat ng items na in-offer nila for trading or for trade. And, and then, doon sila nag-start ng pag-purchase uh, pag or doon nag-stock yung stock market. Do, doon nag-start yung stock market nila. So, the next okay. one. Yes, so coffee shop. The next one is uh, United States of America. So, as for USA, nag-start yung stock market nila in the year 1791. So, the first stock market na na-establish sa USA is in Philadelphia. And after Philadelphia, nag-branch out sila sa New York and in Wall Street. So, ganun yung naging history ng stock market sa USA. The next is in Japan. So, mm -hmm. the stock exchange started or stock market started in 1870s mm -hmm. sa Japan. So, dito nag-establish uh, na yung stock exchange ordinance. Mm -hmm. So, transferring stock markets located outside or outdoors, they transfer sila to indoors. And there are several um, rules and regulations that agents or brokers have to follow. So this is based on the ordinance Tokyo Stock Exchange. Next start, yeah, uh, which was established in May 15th, 1878, and the trading formally began on June 1st. So, because of this um, ordinance, uh, tradings that were made outdoors, again, were transferred to indoors. At the same time, tradings, uh, meron na siyang time or there was a time that was provided para mahapag-trade. And it, trading starts at 10.30 and should be over by 3.30 in the afternoon. So, since it was just um, started or it was just established, wala pang records na na-file or there were no exact rules because um, yeah, there were no existing govern or governance in the stock market. And with that said, or because of that, dahil walang records, walang anything na nag-state kung magkano yung stocks or kung magkano yung certain products, it's not hard for these people to manipulate the prices of the stocks. Mm -hmm. 
So, so the so next far, Sige po. So far sa ngayon, iba na yung ano, trend ng stock markets. So it's like uh, yeah, it's online. Everything is online. It's yes. really like the whole change. Yes. Before. It's really easier to trade. Okay. Yes. Although at some point, um, it's kasi may mga, I think PSE, wala siyang broker. So it's harder. PSE. PSE po. Mumbai Philippines. Stock. Philippines Stock oh, Exchange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's oh, quite... Na yung, merong mga brokers like uh, um, First Metro, um, mm-hmm. yung Cool Financials. Mm-hmm. Yung mga brokers na ano, dun ka magpaparegister at saka dun ka na trade sa kanila. Yes. Yung um, pinapa, yung ginagamit ko po is BDO, BDO Nomura. Uh, license um, din sila under PSE. Pero sila yung nagre-regulate ng stocks. Yung ginamit ko naman is First Metro. Mm-mm. So like from my my Metro Bank account, diretso na siya. Itra-transfer ko na lang siya sa um, First Metro at saka doon ako mag-trading. Oh, yun po. Same din siya sa ano. Same din siya sa BDO. Oh, parang nagsaserve lang sila as third party. So, yun nga. Uh, because like advance in technology, it also made, you know, trading life easier. Okay. Okay. So, the next topic is limited liabilities company. So, limited liabilities company, before siya na acknowledge or before siya nag-start, the earliest um, form of, ano ba, of ownership or earliest form of trading is solo partnership or solo venture. So when we say uh, sole, yeah, sole proprietorship. So when we say sole proprietorship from the word itself, yung merchant lang, yung nagta-travel, yung merchant lang yung uh, naglalabas ng pera, naglalabas ng capital. And since during this peri- uh, period, during this era, hindi pa masyadong established in transportation, it was also the merchant to risk his own life. Pero because of um, because of this limited liabilities company or limited liability, um, nagkaroon ng opportunity to partner with other people to venture out to other markets. At the same time, nagkaroon ng yeah, so I was saying about uh, limited liabilities company. So, because during this, uh, since it was during this period, na hindi pa nga siya acknowledged by the merchants or other investors, uh, ang usual na ginagamit lang nila is sole investment. Ah, sorry, single venture. So, partnerships would only last only for a particular journey. Pero since it has been um, recognized or it has been acknowledged by uh, business people or by the merchants themselves, um, lumawak yung ito, lumawak yung scope or lumawak yung um, partnership under limited liabilities company. So, when we say limited liabilities company, uh, actually, there are two types of limited liabilities. The first is um, the first is the partnership wherein people or investors hindi sila kailangan or it's not necessary na mag intervene sila sa partnership. So, they would just provide the capital, magbibigay lang sila ng capital, pero kung ano man yung mangyari or kung ano man yung maging uh, end result 
ng partnership na yun or kung ano man yung maging uh, end result ng uh, investment na yun, wala silang responsibility or wala silang um, liability sa kung ano mang mangyayari. But the other type or other form of limited liability or limited liabilities company is um, general partnership wherein nagbibigay sila ng amount or pwede sila magbigay ng, of course, mag invest sila sa company. But at the same time, anything na mangyari sa company or anything na uh, any responsibility, meron silang karapatan to intervene or they have, they have the right to intervene. So, there are different uh, liabilities or there are different concepts of li- limited liability. Pero, uh, so far, or the most common talaga is that silent partners or silent partnership. So, most of the ideas for this is um, uh, for limit, limited liabilities like uh, the partners or um, are not liab- liable for the debts of the business up to the extent of their personal assets, right? Yes. So, mm-hmm. yun nga, uh, magbibigay lang sila ng capital, magbibigay lang sila Kung ng magkano mag- lang yun, um, um, invest a large, uh, t- um, how much is their contribution? Their liabilities are also up to that particular amount. Yes. Only. So let's say, uh, most especially for shareholders, let's say, uh, ang as uh, there's this investor na ang share niya or ang uh, in invest niya sa isang company is twenty percent down. So ang responsibility mm-hmm. niya as well as his profit na mahuwa from the company is twenty percent. That's why there's this concept of the major shareholder or major stockholder kasi siya yung may pinaka malaking in-invest and yung voice niya yung kumbaga siya yung merong last pay kasi siya yung may pinaka malaking contribution dun sa company or malaking in-invest sa company. Mm-hmm. So, there are... This applies also for corporation. Sorry? This applies also for corporation. As so, for corporation, okay. iba-iba po kasi yung corporation eh. Kasi there are corporation that does not uh, allow stockholders or shareholders. Those are private corporations na ang pwede lang na maging part ng board of members or board of directors is possibly someone from the family or let's hmm. say yung mga um, kumbaga yung mga matataas lang talaga. Let's say, oh, uh, someone okay. from the family or someone that was hired by the CEO or was invited to be board to be a part of the board of directors. Wait a ba? There's another na public company. When we hmm. say public company, ito yung mga kompanya na pwedeng bilhan ng stock. Publicly uh, trading. Yes. yes. Open sila for public trading. So, depende pa rin sa type ng company or sa type ng corporation kung pwedeng, magkaro- uh, kung pwedeng mag-invest or pwedeng maging, uh, mag-take part ang public as shareholders or as stock Yeah, so we can link it for stock market, right? Yes. So, this is where that you are, any one of us can uh, uh, trade or can invest yes. for publicly held uh, um, businesses. Yes, po. That's correct. Okay. So, yeah, that's all for business history. Any questions about era of ventures or any clarifications yes. not only sa era of ventures but sa ibang era? Wala naman po. Wala mm-hmm. Okay. 